If, if my knees give out and I start tumbling down, make sure you capture the footage, get the content. <laughs> I'll shoot it in slow-mo too. Yeah, we just tumbling there. <laughs> I picked up Ted this morning. It was kind of early for Ted's sake. So he got a sandwich. What'd you get, Ted? A barbecue rib sandwich. At the AM PM. <laughs> Ted just finished his uh, barbecued gas station AM PM food. Ted, was it your usual? It was good? Yeah. It's like gas station food. <laughs> it's just, uh, I'm used to a certain AM PM, so hopefully this AM PM doesn't get me sick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are on the road. It is 101 in my GPS. It says we will be in Laughlin at 204. Ted and I haven't been there. But I heard the casinos there at Laughlin are very similar to Arizona Charlie's and Jerry's Nugget. So if you've been to any of those two, uh, leave me a comment down below. All right, what do you think so far, Ted? We've been on the road now for half an hour? Probably. It's cool. Does it, does it feel like Vegas now? Yeah, it definitely doesn't look like it. I don't think we're in Kansas anymore, Toto. Well, we finally made it to Laughlin, and uh, it took about an hour and a half from Ted's place. And if you want to know where Ted lives, I'll be sure to put a link down below in the description. I'm just kidding, Ted. Uh, but as we were driving down Casino Drive, we wanted to stop here at the Colorado Bell. So some quick information about the Colorado Bell. Uh, it opened back in November of 1980 and then closed back on March 17th. Then in May of 2020, the owners, who also owned the Edgewater and the Aquarius, announced that the Colorado Bell would be closed indefinitely. We just parked at the Tropicana Laughlin, which uh, opened in 1988 as a Ramada Express. Then in 2007, the name was changed to the Tropicana Express. And then finally, the Tropicana Laughlin. The hotel and casino is operated by Caesars Entertainment. Also, we weren't allowed to film inside. I'm guessing that most of these casinos will probably have the same restrictions, so uh, we'll see. didn't have a plan except just to visit Laughlin since Ted and I have never been here and we really wanted to see if it would be worth visiting again. So we decided we would walk to the farthest casino and then work our way back along the riverside, head back to the car at the very end. And like I said, if they don't allow us to vlog inside, then uh, this might be a short vlog. It is nice outside. It's about 64 degrees, but there's about a 25 mile per hour wind. And if you watch any of my vlogs, you know, I'm prone to talking about the history or at least give you some information about the places I visit. If, if my knees give out and I start tumbling down, make sure you capture the footage, get the content. That's why Ted's in front of me, because if I'm in front and his knees go out, it's gonna hurt. So we made it safely down the four flights of stairs. Ted did not fall, and now we're on top of the Harris parking garage and heading to the elevator. And uh, here's a list of the resorts and hotels we plan to visit. It's kind of a rough draft, so we'll see how it goes, but hopefully we'll be done earlier. We'll see. And this elevator looks pretty run down. I hope it's not indicative of what we'll find inside. 
Opened in August 1988, Harris Del Rio, later renamed to Harris Laughlin, is still operated by Caesars Entertainment. Its Mexican Riviera theme runs throughout. The one thing about the Harris Laughlin is that they have one tower reserved solely for 21 and older guests. We are out on the Colorado River. This is about all we can show you because the security guard asked us not to vlog anything facing the building, but we can the Colorado River. What do you think, Ted? I think the security guard doesn't want us to film the building because it's run down. It's like, a, it's like we're in a Saw movie. I'm not trying to talk about this place, but I want to stay. <laughs> it might be haunted. <laughs> <laughs> We're taking the water taxi. It's $5 each direction or $10 for the round trip. We're actually at the south end of Harrah's. We're gonna go all the way to the Riverside and back. Thanks, Ted, for buying my ticket. Opened as Samstown Gold River back in 1984, this property was renamed to River Palms in 98 and then to the Laughlin River Lodge in 2014. And uh, the reason you're seeing the outside is we totally forgot to walk through this resort. But I did look it up and the midweek rates are $50 and no resort fees. As we make our way through this passageway, this is actually on the Arizona side where they observe mountain time. According to the captain, on New Year's Eve, visitors will head to Bullhead City, celebrate the New Year, and then jump back on one of the water taxis and head back to the Nevada side for round two of the New Year's celebration. If you look to the northeast from the river, you can see the outline of the sleeping Indian or sleeping giant. His head is on the left and his feet are on the right. This island is home to a trip of goats brought to the area to keep the vegetation under control. And as you can see, yeah, I mean, they even trim some of the trees. Real quick, if you look at the Aquarius Hotel sign during the daylight, you can see where they painted over the original flamingo lettering. So instead of returning to Harrah's, uh, we decided to get off at the Golden Nugget Dock and totally forgot about the Laughlin River Lodge. Originally known as the Bobcat Club in 1967, it was later renamed the Nevada Club. Then in 1988, it was sold to Golden Nugget. In 2005, the property was sold to Landry Incorporated. And if you're not familiar with Landry, they also own the Golden Nugget in Las Vegas and the three restaurant chains that are featured here at this location. It's the Bubba Gump Shrimp, Claim Jumper, and Saltgrass Steak. The Colorado Club opened in 1979 and was later renamed the Pioneer Hotel and Gambling Hall in 1981. Its sister property was the Pioneer Club on Fremont Street in Las Vegas, which is why there's an exact copy of Vegas Vic called River Rick. So if you do want to have your picture with River Rick behind you, just go straight to the back of the casino and out the doors. And uh, yeah, River Rick is right there. So <laughs> we're leaving Pioneer. Be sure you watch Ted's video though. He got this great time lapse. Hopefully he uses it. I don't make it back home, it's all Ted's fault. We went down to the river's edge and uh, there are river gators here. So if you don't know about them, I'll put a link down below about the river gators here on the Colorado River. The Edgewater opened in 1981 and immediately ran into licensing difficulties with the Nevada Gaming Control Board. They were concerned about alleged connections between some partners in the ownership and members of the Detroit crime family. So we've hit basically every casino along the river. We've got two left. 
the Aquarius Casino Resort has changed ownership several times and changed its name. Originally, it was the Flamingo Hilton Laughlin, then to the Flamingo Laughlin, and now the Aquarius. We're now heading into Aquarius, and they do have some decorations, but if I can find them at Home Depot, then it doesn't really count. Built in 1990, the Aquarius is one of the more recent built-from-the-ground-up casinos. Midweek rates are $39 with a $17 resort fee. Ben, you look tired. I'm a little tired. Why? Right. Because I, right, I didn't sleep that much. We decided to stop at Outback inside the Aquarius to eat, so I totally forgot to vlog my meal. I had a deep pit sandwich on sourdough. This is all that's left. It's good. And uh, they give you a dipping sauce, which is like the bloomin' onion dipping sauce. So these are the fries, really good. Of course, ketchup. I think we did six casinos, six or seven. Got one left, then we're gonna go head back to the trop where we parked, and then time to head back to uh, Las Vegas. All right, so we're heading over to Riverside. I think we're going that way, right? Thanks, Ted, for dinner. It was good, I appreciate it. Uh -huh. How was your meal? It was good, but I'm pretty sure a fat burger would have been better. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'll probably still get a burger now. This resort was one of the first ones to open back in 1966. It offered an all-you-can-eat chicken dinner for 98 cents. They had 12 slot machines and two live gambling tables. To this day, the Laughlin family still owns the resort. Ready to see some cars? Uh, I have a feeling it's closed, but. <laughs> <laughs> Located on the third floor and free for players card holders, this collection of classic vehicles are either privately owned or available for purchase and fill a 30,000 square foot space. Now there is a smaller car exhibit on the first floor, but the docent informed us that they would be closing it down and relocating some of the vehicles up here. We've been in Laughlin for about five hours now and walked almost five miles. So if my footage doesn't look cool or cinematic, uh, that's my excuse. By far, it's probably the best showroom I've seen. It took us about an hour and a half to walk through the exhibit, and honestly, I didn't want to check it out, but for $2, it's definitely worth it, especially if you like classic cars. Well, that'll do it for this vlog. I hope you enjoyed that quick look at Laughlin. We arrived at 2 p.m., and now it's 8 p.m., and uh, it was interesting to explore for us first-timers, but Ted's right, the stuff kind of seems run down. I mean, I did enjoy the water taxi ride and the car museum. Uh, Ted and I also gambled, and we both lost pretty quickly. I think Laughlin is worth visiting at least once. And as promised, here's the Laughlin version of the MGM Grand. So if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button down below and ring the bell icon. That way you'll be notified when I upload new content. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.